Welcome it's in it's to the DNVR Avalanche podcast. We got AJ, we got Eric, we got Rudo. Oh, God. The Avs win yeah. six to five over the Calgary Flames in a game that was way more of a roller coaster than it needed to be. Uh, but you know what? You know what they don't ask? How? But it was fun. They only asked how many, at least on the scoreboard. Uh, we are here to tell you all about how it happened, though. Uh, and let's start that off by doing the 60-second rundown. First period, I really thought the Avs played some great hockey. Uh, they probably deserved better than it being 1-1 after the first. But Miko did a big dumb. And the Avs are down one nothing before they do get that goal back off an unreal play from Ross Colton that gets Tomas Tatar's first goal of the year. Uh, the second period was absolutely all over the place. You get a great goal from a car on the power play. You get an absolute bludgeoning of Georgiev and the Avs defensively for the rest of the period as Calgary dumps in four goals. The Avs do get another one. It was 3-3 three to three at one point, but the game is 5-3 to three going into the third period. It takes a little bit for the Avs to figure it out, but they finally get a good bounce. The puck comes out to Colton. They make it 5-4, uh, and then the Stars take over, and the Stars do star things. Miko gets one to go off of his hip, and then Nathan McKinnon just absolutely turbo dunks one past Dan Vladar, and the Avs win the game. <laughs> a lot of ground to cover here, but the first thing we have to cover is... Tommy's taters? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, so Tommy's taters. Okay. Oh. So this is a funny story that uh, a handful of people have heard already, but way back when Tomas Tatar got traded to Vegas, um, Z was friends with somebody who was a like a nascent Z a Vegas fan. He was just getting into it. And so she convinced him that... Tomas Tatar should be his favorite player because he, he had a charity called Tommy's Tater. Yeah. <laughs> and that it was uh it was like it was like every time he scored a goal or whatever they donated money to a charity or something. <laughs> it's completely made up, right? <laughs> this dude totally bought it. Like full on bought it and then was like, "Why does he suck?" cuz his Vegas tenure went Horribly. About as well as his abs tenure has. Yeah. Yeah. Went, it went horribly. And he was like, this guy's terrible. Like, I don't care about his charity. He's not going to be my favorite player. And then they traded him. And then yeah. he, he was good after that. Yeah, and then so he was good he was in Montreal. Great. And then he got to Colorado, and it was like, oh, no, not again. But tonight we didn't care about any of that because the long national nightmare ended. He paid for some taters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh Let's let's start here. We're going to have negatives and positives smattered throughout this show. What the hell, Miko? It's a wild ride for that guy. <laughs> it was a wild ride for him, man. <laughs> but it was great. It I mean, the, great. the way it the way that it great. ended is like yeah. it's all good. This is why well, you paid. Well, what are you two said, right? Oh, oh, this is setting up for Miko time. Yeah. And it did right after. You guys are geniuses. Love it. Yeah, I mean, at 5-4, it was like, <laughs> come on. This has to be Miko, right, <laughs> to get this tied, to get this level. It was. Yep. Uh, let, me, let me start here, because we were talking about this halfway through this game when things were falling apart for Colorado. Obviously, in the end, it worked out, but you guys said it. You need better from your top players. Obviously, Miko with his goal scoring, all that. But you need better from them on the opposite side of the ice, too. Nico, for uh, the second time in a handful of games, just turns over a puck at his own blue line, and the puck's in the back of the Avs net to start yeah. in the first period. Yep. <laughs> how much of this is there's a solution here, and Miko can implement it, and how much of this is you're just going to have to live with that with this guy? Well, until they get out of the funk, which it sounds like tonight. Uh, they better be out of it after That's this That's out one. of the yeah. funk. I mean, you know, those are big years. Miko's going to go on a big stretch here. Nate's been on the stretch right now. but And, and you again, know, I'm, I, yeah. I agree with you on the offensive yeah, side. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but I mean, that it goes to, for me, it goes together, right? You okay. know, look in the third. They didn't give up anything, and then they score a couple big goals. And 
Uh, is it a couple? No, well, at least, well, I mean, sorry. The last 25 minutes of the game. You know what I mean? Like, they, they score a, a few big goals that line. They don't give up any. Um, yeah, and it started, I mean, the Miko turnover. But it also started with Nate, right? A few shifts before. Yep, it does. Again, Taze covers his bacon there on the way back. But, uh, listen, I like the effort tonight because they were trying they were I, working hard, right? 100% That's what we're saying. Yeah. with you. It, it and, was not for lack of effort. And, and then it was ugly. And sometimes it just needs to get uglier for you to get out of it. And, and, and it got ugly. I mean, as, as it, they make that turnover, they're down one nothing. I mean, it got ugly for McCarr, Taze, and what were they, dash four at some point? Going into the third. I mean, going into the third. That, that's tough. That's tough. When you're, it's, when you're losing five to three and your best guys are negative. It's right four. on the chin. You're taking it on the chin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always say it's a shovel across the forehead, right? And then somewhere, somehow, a turn. And why? Because they're good, they're good players and the effort was there. A uh, couple brain farts, right? <laughs> but, but the moment was set up. You guys said it. The moment set up for them to take over. That's what elite players do the cream always rises to the top yeah and it does i don't care what kale was having a tough one you know yeah. what i mean and then all of a sudden right he makes he those, yeah. that's right <laughs> and those guys can and calgary found it found out the hard way tonight you know if you're ryan huska then you're like oh god like what was that we had everything going for and next thing you know like you're like whoa what just happened you know what i mean it was a snowball and then they weren't able to stop it. Next thing you know, you go home with your head between your legs and you lost 6-5. Simple. Elite players. It's it's really... I, I want to stay with Miko first yeah, yeah. for a minute. But it's really all over the place for a, a Colorado team that it felt like the end of this game has been coming for a long time. But certainly the second period of this game has been happening far too frequently as yeah. of late. And it, I just I just don't know how to feel about Miko on the whole over this last stretch because obviously he breaks out great you feel like he's done with the funk he'll start doing things but the back end is it going to get better or is it a is it he's just going to outscore that problem? Yeah, I mean it will get better. Okay, as I've as I've said that in the past that the the defensive side of things is really where the Avalanche do their best work. And what we're seeing right now, I mean, I think it's the fifth Calgary goal. Taves and McCard. Yeah. yeah. McCard just doesn't yeah. defend his guy. McCard, yeah. McCard's yeah. just standing there. Yep. Watching Noah Hannafin be awesome and skate around the net as <laughs> McKinnon chases him. McKinnon doesn't really even do anything wrong there. He's doing his job. Yeah. And McCard just gets caught sleeping. Yeah. yeah. McCard, McCard doesn't do anything. Just, and, and like, I thought you were bad tonight, but like, you don't help him at all, right? Not there. on that no, one. Yeah. There. And that's, and that's where, you know, the back end, like, again, your top guys, they're just not doing, they weren't doing enough for you oh. <coughs> defensively. Mm -hmm. Offensively, you, you felt pretty good about what they were able to generate and the way that they were playing. Power plays were looking good. Everything was honestly looking good, except for in that part of the ice. And then you got a bad night out of your goalie, and then it just everything kind of st stacked up really, really fast in that second period. All right, so we see you asking for a chat. We have Miko's post game presser. Uh, is, is it ready? Okay, we'll have it for you in a minute. Don't worry, we'll get there. Uh, anyway, for Miko, is this? Uh, let's let's go back a minute because it's it's Tatar that scores the first goal. Yeah, he gets off the slide. It's Ben Myers who gets one in his game tonight. Awesome. A guy who last time he was with the Avs went a long stretch without scoring goals. Is this a rising tide raises all ships kind of game for the Avs at the end of the night? Is this an everyone gets to step up and and ride this high for a little bit now? Oh, I think so. I, I think this sets them up uh, for the next game and then to get on the road and um, – they had to win this game. We talked about it before the game, right? You don't win that game. You're, you're now in a three-game losing skid at home. Uh, you know, this is not, no offense to Calgary, right? But this is not the you Vegas Golden them. Knights. You should beat them. Yeah. So we talked about before the game. So if you don't win that game, now it's in your head. Now it's like, oh, my Lord, like, what is going on? You know, and then, then you start to... 
uh, I hate the word panic, but you know, you start to worry, you start to grip the stick, you start to, it creeps up in your head uh, as a team. And then as individuals, right? Tuna Tatar, he doesn't score. Now you're like, holy crap. You know what I mean? Like, Miko doesn't score. It's, oh, man. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Now I'm going to have to answer those questions again. And, you know what I mean? It gets old. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I think it was an unbelievable finish to, 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 to fix what didn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, which is awesome. And then you're going in there now. Okay. My home stands two and two. You win the game. It's a win, you know, against Buffalo. Another opponent you should win. Yeah. Uh, now you're up three and two. You move on, you go on the road, and again, would you like to be 5-0? and oh? Yeah, but you can't go backwards. Yeah. And I just thought it was a great finish. I think this is where they don't look back. KLN had a point in three games. Next thing you know, you have tonight two, whatever. Uh, those are big plays. So it's uh, it, it was a great finish. It was exciting. And, you know, you put a big smile on your face. And if you're a coaching staff, you just pull your hair, and you're like, oh, God, i got to look at this tomorrow. But, you know, <laughs> for the fans, I bet you it was electric in there. Well, and, and, you know, obviously we're going to focus a lot more on the finish than the middle part of the game because yes, of course. the way that it happened. But it this is, it feels like a breakthrough, right? Yep. Because in that second period, it's a disaster. Totally. Your, your best players are costing you the game actively. Yep. They're the ones who are on the ice for I, – I, I think plus minus is stupid. Mm. I rarely cite it. It's rarely meaningful to me. But When you're minus four, it's meaningful. Well, and, and like <laughs> in that case, you're looking at it and you're like – What's happening on the goals again? Your best players are just getting worked. Yep. Over and over and over and over again. Defensively worked. Yep. Offensively, when they have the puck, they're actually doing a decent job. They're creating some chances. They're flying around a little bit. You know, they had uh, uh they they create that power play goal. It's a nice goal. Great. That's all cool. You feel like half of it is good, and the other half of it is disastrous. And it's felt like this for a little while. You know, we were critical of McKinnon on the last road trip. Yep. He got He'd home. He figured it out. He yeah. got home and uh, immediately, like, reverse monstered it, right? <laughs> and the, the frustration was not production. It was that they weren't taking over games. They weren't doing the things that we've seen them regularly do over the last five years yep. where they dominate games. They win games. Yeah, they don't. They score a lot of goals. They give up a fair share of goals as well, but the the ratio of it is way higher for what they score and what they generate. And that's where you're like, well, that's how that's how you win a lot of hockey games. How the Avs have spent their money. That's how they're built. It's how they're built to be successful. And when Kale McCarr is playing as poorly as he was, yeah, it's really hard to win. Yep. When Miko Rantanen is not scoring in in ten, like. There's something to be said for depth scoring and you need help and whatever, whatever. You got it tonight, but it comes down to your big guys, your best players. <laughs> we say it almost every game, but it's just true. And it's especially true for the Avalanche who are built to be elite at the high end. They are built to be a bit of a top heavy roster and they are. But you see tonight how it starts. Oh my God! What is this? It's a disaster. <laughs> You're talking about. Oh my God! This 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 game and this homestand are on the verge of completely going off the rails. Yep. And yep. then in the third period, you get a good bounce. Ross Colton scores. That's, That's great. Right. We'll talk about him because yeah, he was un will. unreal. But this dude, uh, the, these dudes tonight, your best guys, Kale McCarr, Miko Ranton, and Nathan McKinnon. Those guys win you the game. They come out. They almost throw the game away. And then when it comes down to it in the third period, they win you this game. Yeah, they don't just reel them back in. They get right. it done. They, yeah. they completely take over in the third period, and they finish. Yep. And that's been the frustration of it is they haven't been able to do both. Yep. They haven't been able to take care of the defensive end and then have a really good offensive game. They've had some slow offensive, you know, and, like, you get a point here and a point there. You know, McKinnon's got a 12-game point streak, but... You're not going to look at those 12 games and say Nathan McKinnon has been great in those 12 games. It's not even close. Maybe but, in the last three or four. But you but, look at since the this, this homestand yeah. that they are on now, you're looking at it going, all right, you're 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 now two and two on this homestand. Yep. And you love how Nathan McKinnon has been for the majority of it. Yeah, yep. There are some nitpicks tonight, but I mean, come on. Give me a break here. I, I would say the same thing and certainly of the last two nights of Miko even. Yes, there are the 
brain dead plays that yeah. cost the abs dearly. Absolutely. But you look at everywhere else in his game, even against Philly the other night, he's working. He's he's creating opportunities. Yeah. The good play is there. And if you look at that goal, he gets greasy. Yep. He gets greasy. He where did he go? Eric, where did he go? He went to Pizza Hut. <laughs> uh, you want pizza? But you get that he got greasy. The the grease was dripping down his face, and he's trying to fight for position. And then you know he gets the good bounce on yeah, him, and, yeah. and and you get rewarded when you do the right things. If you're not doing the right things and you're just curling and going away, and like he was tending to do maybe a few games ago, I agree with you. It all started last game. Did he get rewarded? No, but tonight he did. And then I think he's just going to take off right now. And when you're in a slump. Tuna Tatar. You call that a real slump, right? I mean, I mean that's I mean, we're talking beyond about. slump there. But yeah. where does he go? Right to the front of the net, right? And he scores that. And if he just goes, there's five guys. What a play by Ross Colton. But it's five guys when he scores right there. Why? Because he's in front. He's right there. You don't score from the outside. This league is too tough on that unless the goalie has a bad night. You know what I mean? And uh, like we saw tonight, one of those goals. I mean, that's a bad goal. But, mm. yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, mm-hmm. I, I can't defend him on that one. I can't. <laughs> um, but going back to it, the ass got greasy. The ass got dirty. And Bettinar was talking about this all the time at the start of the season. I mean, almost every presser, not just the start of the season, this is how you win in the spring. This is how you do it. This is how you do it at the end there. Forget about the, the brain farts earlier in the game. Forget about the bagels. But you win when the, when the, sh- when the, the stuff's tight. You, you got to get to the greasy areas. You got you to gotta muck it up. And even though the superstars tonight, they mucked it up. I mean, McCarr, McKinnon, Ranton, and the third there, those, they were pumped. You tell me like it's a normal December game? No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a normal December game. It's a game where you shut the bed, you're down dash four, you know, as as the you know the, the three best players, they're struggling, and next thing you know, they win the game, and it's like whew, you can breathe a little bit again. No, you got to get back to work again tomorrow and the next day. But what I'm saying is it meant a lot because they they owe it to each other to perform tonight, and they did. I'm I'm talking about oh yeah yeah in the second and, half you know yeah and I mean we've talked about how good they've been in third periods all season yeah. oh same. but I think what what was different about this third period and certainly why when we were sitting around watching the game I I still had confidence mm-hmm. that there this was still a hockey game even though it was five three they were working you could see Miko working yes. in the first couple periods you could see. Kill McCarr's trying, right? It's yeah. not like a lazy night where they're all just kind of lollygagging around. Yeah, they're making mistakes. Yeah, they're giving up goals. Yeah, they're getting yeah. beat and all this and that. But they're putting the effort in. And those guys are just far too talented to not get rewarded more often than not when they really, really, really start going. And I think part of this is we're kind of jumping all over the place, but that's just going to be tonight's show. Yeah. They get the good bounce on the Ross Colton goal, Huge. right? You, it takes one good bounce, and this team goes, we're taking an effing mile. Yeah, and, and with it, it happened with, what, like eight minutes Nine ago? Nine minutes, eight yeah, minutes something, something like yeah. that. It was right around just under halfway or yeah. just over halfway into the period. They get that goal, and you could see Calgary retreat. Yep. Emotionally just retreat. Yep. And the Avs were like, we got the goal that we needed to really start to believe that we're in this. Yep. We have dominated this period. We have outplayed them. For stretches in this game that we should be really proud of. And they get that fourth goal from from Ross Colden and the whole team. It was on. Yeah. Just took flight. And we're talking, we're gonna spend a lot of this pod talking about the third period, but yeah. they really they erased deficits of one nothing, two one, three no, two. They led to one. Five three. Okay. But three two and Great. five three. Yeah. yeah. So you have you have three different deficits, one of which is a two goal deficit that you come back from. There's, I know there's all this conversation about they don't have a killer instinct. They don't have any leadership. They don't have any grit. They don't have a, they're missing heart. What is that then? Tonight, if that's not what you're looking for, what is that then? Yep. I, that all the looked like grit and heart to me. I well, don't know what, and to tell what you. is it. What is it when a team is exceptional in third periods? It just outworking other teams, right? Is I mean, it's also uh, skill. I mean, but I, mean I, I don't know what I would call it, but I'm saying. I think this whole, like, they don't have a captain. Yeah. 
their leadership group is is yeah. not held accountable and and I, I mentioned this the other day. What does accountable look like to you when it comes to a guy like Miko Rantanen? What do you do? Well, if you decide to bench him in the third period, you don't get the, the game time goal. I I hate to sidetrack you, but I'll tell you this. Miko Rantanen was holding someone accountable today in his post game interview. Do you uh, want to do this now or at the start of the second period? I mean, I was going to do it now, but we can wait if you want. You're running the show. I was just asking. Just roll the tape. That's good. Let's you know, see. And, and uh, there's actually one thing where I got a lot of extra energy. You know, one of our Finnish NHL players' dad was talking shit about me in the media that I didn't train last summer like I used to do. And, and uh, he was just making, making things up. So I think that was, that was for him, you know. Uh, if you, if you talk shit, it's going to come back at you. So. And Prozbatov comes in, does a great job, of course. Not mincing words about that one is Miko Rantanen. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, okay. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, look. I, I guess my response would be, were the first four goals you were on the ice for for him too? Or... <laughs> Because it's a body of work, right? And like the goal that he scores, he just like gets a stick, barely gets a stick on. He goes to Pizza Hut, but he got breadsticks, brother. <laughs> you know, it's greasy. He got he yeah. Reward. That's what I'm saying. Greasy. He got <laughs> breadsticks, my man. They were delicious breadsticks, and he needed them. But you know, I, I and and I fully believe that this is going to open up the door for me oh, totally. to just go yeah. rampaging through like a true moose. <laughs> but. Uh, whoa, buddy. <laughs> good, good for him. Hey, look, when you're winning games, you get to talk your shit, right? Yeah, it's true. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Swag. And it's, and Swag. it's I, I will say it's it's easy to talk shit from the other side of the ocean when you're not around the team <laughs> and you're and, and your kid's not playing right yeah. now. It's easy to say some stuff, right? It's easy to have thoughts on what's not going right. Yeah. Definitely. In, in the same way that we always, it's in the same way that we always acknowledge, it is very easy for us to sit here and say, "What is this guy doing? What yep. is that guy doing?" Yeah, we're sitting in a bar watching on television, not out there doing it for sure. You know. Uh, <laughs> on that note, you all have got us to almost 150 likes. Let's do our winner shots before they get warm here. We appreciate all y'all supporting us as always. Uh, some vitamin W. For y'all. Thank you, chat. As always, <clears throat> our winner shots are brought to you by Breckenridge Distillery, Ooh. the official alcohol of the Denver Broncos and DNVR. Uh, oh. You can get yours at BreckenridgeDistillery.com. They have tons of award winning alcohols, and you can also check out their restaurant if you're around and in town. Uh, on that note, we are brought to you by Bet365. You can go get your gamble on with Bet365. Uh, would have been a night to take the over for sure uh, on this one. You also probably would have cashed in on pretty much any bet you made on the Avs top guys. So go, go, go do it. It's time. What am I looking at? Look at this. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. We made it. It's official. Well. We got the uh, the fridge retweet on the DNV Arabs account. Uh, anyway, go get Bet365. Use the DNVR 365 code today. You can sign up and get a bunch of boosts, including the NHL parlay boost for up to 30% on your bets. My parlay didn't hit tonight, but Club. that's okay. We need a better game from Georgiev for that parlay to hit, unfortunately. Still, always a great time to bet. You get your money in on Kale McCarr. You get your money in on Miko Rantan when he's going. A lot of free money to be had with the Avs. We'll put it that way. Uh, get over to Bet365 today. When you download the app, you must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. <laughs> and if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER today. Uh, and then when you win some money on Bet365, go get yourself a pair of Shady Rays. Yeah. Uh, you can get your Shady Rays at ShadyRays.com. When you use the code DNVR, you get 50% off when you get two pairs of sunglasses or more in your order. They're fantastic sunglasses. We all love them here. We all use ours all the time. Uh, I desperately <laughs> need them when I drive now because I often drive into the sun, uh, which, you know, I chose a poor place to live, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but 
Join over 250,000 people who have given them five stars. And if you want to try them out, if you don't like them, break them, lose them in the first 30 days, Shady Rays will replace them completely for free. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. Uh, we don't need to talk about it for too long, but second period of this game. The Avs, as a team, fall mm-hmm. apart. Obviously, it's your big guys doing a lot of the struggling. As Including far your as goaltender. And that's where I was going. Sorry. A, a, a tough one from Alexander Georgiev tonight. It's just bad. Yeah. And it's not like you can make an argument that he's been overworked. He Ivan had Pros- the last game off. Yeah. Ivan Prosvitov has played two games in the last week. Yep. Like, this isn't a case of a guy that you're just playing into the ground here. You played him a lot early. You got Prosvitov. You got him in there. Now he's starting to get into the games a little bit more often. This is not a guy. This is not a guy that you can make an overworked argument for. At and, all. And not only that, again, there's two folds to this. You make mistakes when you're in the funk, pucks in your net. It, it just goes that way, right? I mean, you just you make the one bad turnover, right? And then you don't get the save, pucks in your net. They were playing a fine first period. They had, what, maybe four shots against maybe one scoring chance? You know what I mean? And, and it wasn't, again, you're talking about his body of work. He's not being overworked the last week or so. You know what I mean? But during the game, he wasn't being overworked either. You know what I mean? It's but not like he was getting great dude A's after great A's. Five goals on 18 shots. That's the like. point. Like, he wasn't. <laughs> and the one thing, here's what I like. And I'm a fan of his. He's going to get out of this funk, but that's a funk now. Like, and, and sometimes you pull each other up a little bit. That's that's one way to pull a goalie up, right? Is because the one thing you can do as a hockey player, I don't care if you're a goalie or a forward, is what? Take away their ice time. Yeah. That's the only way you can I mean that's the one thing and you were talking about Miko, do you do you mm, do you take it away from him tonight? Yeah. Then he doesn't get that comeback. But they're special players. It's hard to do with guys like that. Easy to do to Ben Myers or you know, whatever. Right? A lower end guy in the lineup. But as a goaltender you take your ice away, and it was not like, oh, it's not his fault tonight. We're going to try to get the, the team going. I haven't listened to Ben Nars Presser, obviously, because we're doing this right now, yeah. but I'm not sure what he said. But if, if I, I would have pulled him too. And mm-hmm. during the intermission, you know, went bathroom break, I, we didn't even bring it up, the three of us. But in my mind, I was like, I hope he pulls him. You know what I mean? And I don't like that on goalies. Come Sometimes pulling can, can have some certain effects afterwards and all that kind of stuff. But for me, you take if you're not up to snuff, you're not playing good enough, you take away your ice time. I don't care if you're a goalie or if you're a centerman. And I thought that was the right move tonight. Pospitov came in and made 12 saves. It's all good. He gets the victory. Here's, no harm done. But you got to be better. Here's the difference for me. Miko Rantanen has spent the last five years proving he's an absolutely elite talent that you ride or die with that guy. Well yeah. said. Alexander Georgiev has been good for Colorado in his tenure here, but he hasn't been amazing. He was really good last year for most of the season. This year has been way more uneven. He had the white hot start. Mm -hmm. And then he has largely struggled. Now, in the last, like, week, (laughs) he's put put together. It's come up. This one, obviously. Yeah, yeah, he's put in. One of the things we don't talk about very much with goaltenders is there's nowhere to hide when you're having a bad day. Yep. <laughs> you know, when Ben Myers, you, you talk about... You can't give yeah, yeah, the puck yeah. to McKinnon time. and say, exactly. all right, my shift you is know, over. <laughs> Riley, Riley Tufty has a bad giveaway in that Minnesota... I think it was the Minnesota game. Yeah. <laughs> it, ends up in a, it, the, it ends up in a goal behind him. He gets sent down, and he's just in the ether now. Yep. You know, like, there's, it's easier to hold a guy like that accountable. A yeah. starting goaltender, a guy that you have made clear, this is our guy. When he has a bad day, there it's it's a lot harder, and ultimately he he is held accountable. And I feel a little bad for him because some of the performances lately he's not been given fair a, shakes. Yeah. yeah, he's not been given a great performance by the team in front of him. Hey, today, man. today, in, in, in it's weird. In no way, the three of us are not going to sit here and say that all five goals against oh, no. are. No. On Alexander Georgiev. Not even close. As I mentioned, that fifth goal, what are you doing, man? Like, yeah, there's no, nothing. The fourth goal is a crazy bounce. Yeah, fourth goal is a crazy bounce that you probably want a little more from Devon uh, Taves on. Yeah. But the third one. The third, the third one, you look at him and you go, that's on you, guy. Yep. 
That's a hundred percent on you. It is. That's the kind of shot on goal that you give up all game long. And because think, your goalie stops it. <laughs> if we give up thirty five of these things, we should have a shutout. We tonight. should have a shutout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's just not, and that's not good enough. I, to be honest with you, I would like a little bit more on the first one. I think that's fair. It's pretty far out. It's not such a great shot. First one was? Kadri. Oh, yeah, that's that right, yeah, Coming yeah. down the ice. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. That one I, I would probably like a little more on, but I've, I've never been like a super hard on a goaltender from shots like that from talented players in the middle of the ice. You know, I, I would probably like a little bit more there. You know, if you're... If you're going in a, we, we talk about this all the time, best of sevens. If you're in a best of seven against the Connor Hellebuck, do you expect Connor Hellebuck to make that save? Yeah. It's so why don't you expect Alexander Georgiev to make it? And and I so personally, I want more. It, it's the body of work of the game. Even if some of the goals are not his fault, hmm. you look at it through the steps of the game. All right, he gave up the first one. The Avs come back and get him a lead. He gives up another one to tie the game. He gives up a bad third one. Yeah. Now yeah. Calgary has a lead. It's pretty easy to say, all right, you can't give up another one here. Yeah, and the wheels kind of fall off for the Avalanche in the same way that they did in the Philadelphia game, but you had better totally. pushback today. Yep. Here, hence that term, timely save, right? You know, everybody's <laughs> yep. always like, whoa, save is a timely save. No, it, it's not. But when you're getting momentum or you're gaining back momentum or, or you're trading away punches, that next one can go in. Tonight it was going in. Yep. And and that's why he got pulled. Uh one last thing I'll say about him is, for me, he looks a little tight right now. He looks a little, like, uh, a little angry. You got to remember sometimes it's a fun game, right? It was a frustrating night tonight for, mm. for fans, for coaches. Coaches, listen, they were pulling their hair. <laughs> yeah, but these are not fun but you got to remember, it's fun. And if you're a coach right now, you get back in the dressing room, you pull out a beer, and you're like, whoa, wow, I, you're crazy. But, whoa, boy, is this fun when you win, right? So he's got to remember it's a fun game. He looks a little tight. If you go back a couple of games, remember he slashes Malinsky, like, you know, when he yeah. was in front of him. Screen, like yeah. It. yeah. You know, it just little things like that. Tonight, Kadri's near him. He's losing it. You know, control the controllables, get in the net, smile, have fun, make saves. You have a great team in front of you. Stop a goddamn puck, kid. St that's it. Stop a puck, and don't worry about the rest, and don't worry about blaming anyone. And guys are going to mess up, and guys are going to mess up again, and guys are going to mess up the next game. Your job is to make sure you clean up mop duty. You know what I mean? And and somewhere you got to make sure you go back to the mentality of nothing bothers you. I used to say, I say that to Mike Richter all the time. Every game. It was a little ritual. Hey, Ricky, nothing bothers you, right? Nope, nothing bothers me. You know, and that's the mentality <laughs> you have to have. And right now it seems like things are bothering him. And he's not just concentrating on the hockey game. He's concentrating on every little thing that goes sideways. And there, there are. You're going to be in a funk. There's going to be some weird stuff that goes against you. And there's been so Again, the Connor Zari goal. Yep. He bats it out of the air. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Right? Or the Nashville game when it bounces back from yep. you know, the park yep. from behind. Him. I mean, shit happens. So go back. Put a smile on your face. It's the National Hockey League. You have a great team in front of you. Take it easy. Here's a little bit of a bigger picture with it too, though. Yeah, Georgiev is going to wake up tomorrow. He can go buy Prozvatov a steak because he won that game for him, and then he's still going to be the Av starter. Well, I, I, well, for sure. It, that you my know. point being was this a bad game? Yes. Georgiev is not suddenly in danger of losing his job. Yeah, and it's not like he was. It's it's not like he was so bad. You know, like, again, we're talking about a handful of these goals here. Some some things just happen. Yep. And it's like he's the guy that it goes against his record. Yep. It's not going on Kale McCars or, yeah, it's a dash whatever. It's a dash one. <laughs> yeah, at the end when of the he night, just, not when so he bad. When he puck watches, yeah. Kale McCarr's not getting pulled. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He was dog shit through two periods. I, it, it's it's That's what sucks about being goaltender sometimes. Yeah. But also, that team in front of him has given that guy a lot of wins, which for some reason only get assigned to that guy. And that's, you know, he gets paid off some of that stuff. Yep. So, you know, life of a goalie. Comes and goes. Yeah, he'll be back at practice tomorrow just doing his thing. Like you said, it's not yep. like it's not like he's losing his job. He'll probably be the guy that, that plays against Buffalo on Wednesday. And I will say, I, I, 
think you know what? I don't know. We'll see. We'll I'd, see I'd start one. him. I'd start him. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I say probably because I'm. I will leave the door open, but if you start Prozvatov, man, I think you're well, just asking for. Oh, would they? got a back to back after. Yeah. I think There's you're asking a for a problem. So pro, you, yeah, you start Prozy one of the weekend ones. Pro Dog, whatever his name is, his nickname is, he's going to be getting one of those games this weekend. Yeah, yeah. so you're right. You probably start him again. Yeah. Oh, we've we've danced around the dope guy who's not a star long enough. Russ. Avs needed Ross Colton in this game something fierce. Pretty good. I, starting with the first goal, unbelievable work. Starting with the first shift in the game. Honestly, he makes a great play, yeah. Yeah, he goes and smokes Tanev legally. <laughs> yeah. Never came back. By the way, that's a clean hit. I Yeah. <laughs> Noah, Noah Hannafin... Is mad. I get it. One of your teammates gets route. We had this conversation with Logan O'Connor. Okay. Yeah. They pick him up. They kill it off. It's fine. Um, but that's just the beginning for Ross Colton's reign of chaos and terror yeah. in this game. And it's... It, first of all, skill levels through the roof, setting up Tomas Tatar there. And it's not just he makes the play to make the sauce pass from behind the net. Very miko esque but it's everything before that. He's in deep in the offensive zone. He's working. He's forcing pucks to come to avalanche players. It's it's very, I don't, I want to say Logan O'Connor-esque, but Ross Colton has more skill than Logan O'Connor. So he's not o, not only able to create the chaos, he's able to reap the benefits of it yeah, afterward. Yeah, but it's the same thought process. When you work hard, you don't cheat the game, it rewards you. Yep. And we just talked about it. Is it luck? Yeah, it's luck. Manson, what is he? Shoot the puck, the stick breaks, goes off a skate, <laughs> goes right there. Next thing you know, he fumbles at Like, it's not like yeah. he gunned it. And yeah. then they go, it goes in. Well, when you work hard, you don't cheat the game. You treat it right, it rewards you. And and that's the thing. But if you're looking at his body of work, what do you get, a 12, 11, 12 minutes of ice time tonight? I don't think I he don't got know. more than it, that. It wasn't a ton, for hey, sure. Hey, I, I'm telling you, I looked it up. It's, I mean, I don't exactly what it was it was around 12 minutes that's a lot of great value for for those minutes right started the first positivity right? per 60 is really it's high. unreal like he he creates a power play right away creates a power play at the start of the second he makes that awesome pass and you see how pumped he is for tuna tatar it was awesome to see that way more moments. excited for tatar wow! than tatar he was more to be. excited you know and then obviously he scores that big goal He's in there. He, he he just he's fun to watch. It's exciting. The heart rate's up. Uh, not the most talented player in the world, but enough talent to make plays like that. You just said that's a that's an elite play. Tuna's in there with five white jerseys and he finds them. Yeah, that was awesome. Not everyone can do that. Um, you you or, or me, we can't do that. So. I couldn't even pretend That's to think it. that I might be That's able to That's what I'm trying to say. So it was an awesome play. <laughs> but if you're looking at it, like, what is it, 12 minutes? Like, you know, I, I'm I got I, it right here. I'm telling you right now, I'm, it's not more than 12 minutes of ice time. So, again, here, that, that was my I, my point was, yeah, and you get when, unbelievable value tonight. For, yeah, 11-28. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's, here's the thing for me. On a night where, to that point, you felt like you hadn't gotten enough out of your stars. Yeah. Sometimes you need a Ross Colton to do a little bit of the pulling on the rope. And that's that's where, when they got those guys, Wood and Colton, in the offseason, the conversation was about competitiveness. Yeah, the you know, Wood's speed, Colton's goal scoring. Like These are guys that are going to help you in ways that you needed in your bottom six. Mm -hmm. But their competitiveness... They're willing to go, and then when they put Logan O'Connor next to him, that line has taken flight. It's one of the best lines in the NHL. Yep. Um, you know, obviously. Possession-wise. It's production, yeah. production and stuff, like, in the context of being a third line. It might be the best third line in the league right now. Is it the most talented naturally? No. But it's consistent impact on games mm -hmm. is exceptional. And to see that tonight, you needed it. I mean, you needed a line that is just going to keep trying to drag you out of the muck. Yep. And you're playing a great first period. And you're down one, and you're, you're down, one, you're down yeah. one nothing. Thanks in large part to your stars. And those guys go out and 
It's a great play. It's weird because it's a combination of guys. Yep. Frederick Olsson, a, a nice play. Yep. Gets it to Ross Colton. Ross Colton yep. with a great pass to Tatar up front. Yep. yep. Who finishes? Might be the only time that trio was on the <laughs> ice together all night. But it's they made it work, yeah, which is kind of, of the point. Is that you needed guys beyond your, your stars. You needed guys to make it work. And yep. they made it work. And not even just that third line, you know, that, that grouping, but your fourth line. You know, Ben Myers, Frederick Olsson, Andrew Cogliano, they and, and Sam Malinsky. Those guys combined for you for the, your third goal. You know, your stars get a power play goal. Great. They needed it. Yep. Kill McCarr with an absolute laser. Awesome. But then now you're down 3-2. And you needed it. Yep. Keeps you fighting in this yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. It drags you back into the game. It drags you back into relevance. And, you know, it's a, it's a great play by Sam Malinsky down low. And a, it is. It's a great pass. Yep. It's a great. And Ben Myers, what a finish. It rips it. It's a, it's a great finish. Awesome. And for a Ben Myers, we're talking about opportunity. Yeah. You got to earn it. You know, you've got to do something with this. That's earning it right there. Get Zooks, man. <laughs> I mean, that is, uh, that's awfully impressive. I don't yeah. care if you got 10 shifts or two shifts. Yeah. And, and to have that kind of impact from your bottom six and you get a power play goal. Yeah. That's, that's why we are sitting at three. It's three to three. You're like, these guys have played way too well to be sitting here. Just as a team, they have played way too well to be sitting at a three three game. Yep. And then to be better. then to be sitting at five three was incredibly frustrating. Yep. But it was also you could also see the hint of that comeback in their work ethic. And that's where Colton would those guys, that's where their their importance to it, your fourth line tonight. Their importance to the team really shines because it's the work ethic. It's we're going out there and we're gonna continue to bust our ass. Yep. And you know, these guys get not even half the ice time that your stars get. And your stars have to look at that and go, okay, okay. It, I, okay. It's these, infectious. these guys are keeping us in this thing. We need, they, they deserve more from us. It, it, it's exactly. That's exactly it. And you saw, you see it in the start of the third period. All of a sudden, Nico is just bodying dudes. He's muscling through guys, and you're like, it's coming. Here we go. And of course, you know, it's easy to say that knowing they won the game 6 5. But you could see, I mean, yeah, you could see it. I've spent the entire second intermission telling you guys they're yeah. going to win this game. You did? Because you could see it. You could see the work ethic. And it's when you work and you're that talented and it yeah. all comes together, it's just. Get rewarded. You just find a way. And we've yeah. seen these guys. Do it, and and it's not even just them. Obviously, they get goals five and six, and that's obviously the Avalanche needed those. Yeah, but it's Colton. No, you know it's a it's kind of a fluky goal. So yeah. their fourth goal was kind of a fluky goal that yeah. bounces out of straight mid-air. up, and then he just swings at it and he gets it. Yeah, great job. But also, you get a goal out of Tomas Tatar. You yeah. get a solid night out of Jonathan Duran. Yep. You continue to have a Ryan Johansson problem, who loses a guy in front of the net on a goal. Yeah. You continue to have a problem pulling them together and getting a good mixing in a second line yeah, that makes getting, sense. Getting yeah. a line, uh, getting a good night as a group. Individually, you're getting solid nights. Mm-hmm. You know, I really liked Ryan Joe's game last game. Yep. Brian, uh, or Jonathan Duran has had good efforts here and there, whatever. Tomas Tatar has been a little bit more lacking, gets a goal tonight. And suddenly you're looking at it going, all right. He strings a few of these things together. Maybe we start to feel a little differently about yeah. this. But getting a, a solid effort there has been a problem. But, I mean, you're talking about, other than that, your forward core is great tonight. Yeah. I, excellent. When you take into account the third period happening yeah, and the way that it happened and the way that they win you this game, your forward core is very, very, very important in this win. <laughs> You can have all the problems in the world with the first two periods of this game with your your stars and Miko and McKinnon yeah. and, and even I throw Nachushkin in there too, and then they went out and did their job and won the hockey game for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I you can't be upset with the end result. That's for sure. Yeah, and you can see them pressing in that third period. You oh, can yeah. you can see them pressing. You can see them 
just working and working and working. You can see the adrenaline. You can see the try hard. The give a shit is there. Yep. And they're not they're, and they're not doing it in a in a cheap way. You know, as we saw McKinnon do in Los Angeles, for example, that was the one that really bothered me. Where he just gave up on yeah, that exactly. Play. You're yeah. seeing them. You you're not. They're not cheating the game. They're working smart, but they're working hard, and they're they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to find their way, and to see them break through like that, that's the kind of thing where it's like, all right, is this the beginning of them ripping off another four or five? Remembering who they are a little bit, yeah, yeah. and like and to feel that success and to get that surge of confidence to rebuild that belief of like, yeah, you know, I really am the best in the world. Everybody else has been telling me that lately, but I don't feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's nice? Now tonight? they feel yeah. that. You know what's nice tonight too is that's why it makes it exciting and fun is the secondary help. Like yeah. and I always go back to food, right? You know, they set the table for them, right? Tatar, Myers, uh, Colton, <laughs> and then what do they get to have? The big feast, you know, the yeah. big steak <laughs> dinner. They're like, yeah. And what do you go like? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And now it's that's what makes it fun tonight because they set the table for them because they know that those guys are big eaters and they're going to be ready to go and they're going to take the what's it called John Candy the ninety six ouncer and they did right yeah is that the movie is that too old for you guys it, those uh, movies it, they aren't but I just never watched them oh god all right fine but anyway I thought that was that's the part that I love tonight because. It hasn't clicked the last few games. Some things are going well, but then the top guys aren't going well. McKinnon's going well, but then, uh, you know, Miko's not going well. Uh, oh, you're doing all right, but then the goaltending's not going well. So what was nice, it actually all came together in the third, and then you come away with a big win. And a big win. But don't think for one second that this was not a big game for Calgary. There, there were a couple of games below 500 or that you yeah. win that game, They're you're swimming right life. there, yeah. you're just scrapping, you know what yeah. I mean? And don't that season can slip away like that in the NHL. You know that. That was a big loss. Yeah. Management was looking at the clock when it was whatever it is. What was the final? Six, five. So when it was five, five, four, five, With three, like they're looking seven, at the clock. Six they're minutes like, left. Yeah. They're like, okay, God, I want the clock to go down. And they're like, oh, God, it's not going down. And, you know, next thing you know, you walk out of there, you don't even have a point. That's a well, tough one. And, and I wanted to talk yeah. about this because it is important to remember that there's another hockey team out there. Yeah. Yes. The way we've talked about some of these Avs losses, I guarantee you Calgary media is looking at that oh. game winning goal. AJ, you talked about it. You're still confused. How the hell do you let Nathan McKinnon skate right up the middle of the ice completely uncovered? I watched that replay like five times. Just like, <laughs> what are you reading? <laughs> Both of the guys that are skating backwards. There's one guy I think that had just changed, came on the ice, and he's marking Val. Yeah. Who does nothing, by the way. Val gets that puck and just passes it to Nathan McKinnon, <laughs> who is completely alone. That is as penalty shot as a breakaway ever gets. Yep. Like Nathan McKinnon, and he probably doesn't know that, but he has <laughs> miles of space all here. day <laughs> to do whatever he wants there. <laughs> I, I that, don't know what that is. Better and that he doesn't know. He's he's better when he doesn't have to think about it. To right? me, to me though, that's that is a that is a, a sign of a team that the moment just swallowed them up. Yep, they are in a hostile building that has all of a sudden come to life. It's five five. They're about to blow this game. This is going to get embarrassing. Yep, and to make a mistake that big, to me that is that is a team that you're not ready. <laughs> big eyes in a bright moment and just shrank from it. Yep. It swallowed them up, and it didn't swallow up Colorado. On the other side, not at all. They yep. walk into the third period with a two-goal deficit, and their their game takes a jump. Yep, it gets better. Yep, I think that's exactly right. Uh, do want to talk a little bit more about a couple of different things, but before we get into that, we are brought to you by the folks over. At Hero Bread, you can go get. I, who's who's getting the Hero Bread piece of toast tonight? Is it McKinnon for the game winner? Is it Miko for a three point night? Is it Prosvatov for for saving twelve of twelve in the third period? I think I'll give it to Miko just for yeah a lot of reasons for the shit talk. <laughs> I mean <laughs> the goal, yeah. <laughs> the goal. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. I'm not gonna argue. Yeah, the the goal and then the shit talk is pretty. <laughs> 
There's a lot of ways to take that. I just like that it got spicy, man. Uh, me too. I, Hockey I like, needs more drama. Exactly. Man. Like, <laughs> they need they need more guys who aren't afraid of it to be like. Okay. 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 I see you. I well, see you. Avoid the drama with your bread. Go get Hero Bread instead. It's an ultra low carb option, zero sugar per serving. Uh, a bunch of great other stuff too. A ton of protein in there. It's not just bread either. You can get tortillas. You can get buns. Whatever it might be, you can go get it and you can eat it even when you're on any dietary restrictions or things like that. Hero Bread has you covered at hero.co. And when you go there and use the DNVR10 code, you get 10% off your bread. Or you can order on Amazon too. That's fine. Uh, you know, but do it at hero.co. Let them know we sent you over there with the DNVR10 code. Uh, also, uh, we already we already did Breck Distillery, but shout out Breck Distillery again for the winter shots. Uh, they're dope. We love their alcohol over here, or at least I do. Uh, <laughs> Award winning stuff. Uh, it's fantastic. Breckenridgedistillery dot com. Dude, AJ's got some numbers for us. I'm guessing based on those words coming out of I his just, mouth. You're done, right? Yeah, my bad. <laughs> I was pretty sure, but like, <laughs> you're done, right? I. We were talking about Bowen Byram mm -hmm. in the game. Yep. Like during it, like what do we think of him? And I got something coming up after that, though. I after after, after. okay. I cheated and already know this. So yeah. So just at five v five, he played twenty minutes and four seconds at five v five. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But the you know thirty six to nineteen shots, shot attempts, nineteen to nine shots on goal. That's pretty good. Yeah, four to two for the goals. So he's on That's ice. He's on, he's on the ice for six goals tonight. <laughs> four four at least. Yeah. Um, but his expected goals is a seventy one percent, nineteen to seven scoring chances, and eight to four high danger chances. Those are for an individual player. Those are very very high numbers. Yep. And uh, for example, Kiel McCarr's numbers are not that good. They're still on the positive end because, again, that third period happened. Was and they Is it yeah. broken down in periods? No. Oh. Um, but it's... Point oh, I, I would be willing to bet you. I wish I had gone to look, <laughs> but I would be willing to bet you that there is third a... Third period is a vertical line. <laughs> dark contrast between the second and third periods for a guy like Kale. Mm -hmm. One of the other things, as we've, as we've seen um, over the last, I don't know, a like handful of games... Putting Byram with Makar. Yeah, that was my point. <laughs> you got it. Remember, I said I got something to yeah. say right after. I'll just give you the numbers on it. That's fine. Those two together. Yep. Uh, eight to four shots on goal, 15 to six shot attempts, uh, nine to three scoring chances, and three to one high danger chances. So, for the record, he also worked very well with Josh Manson, but. <laughs> We kind of talked early in the season before Devon Taves signed that contract about Bokar and what that would look like. Hmm. Might not be too bad. Hmm. <laughs> what that? That was what I was trying to tell you right before. Yeah. And, and great minds think alike. You know, yeah. three of us are just geniuses. Um, with that said, um, I just sometimes you know you get pissy at coaching. Not you, like. Anyone. Oh, players. probably me. To no, be no, 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 no. Players or, or fans or you get pissy at the coaching staff sometimes because you're like, what were they thinking? Or Right. I love that adjustment. You hear yeah. the word adjustment. You know, they, they if you look in that third period, there's a lot of bow and a lot of kale together. That results in what? Two unbelievable Su goals. It's success. Like, yeah. success. At the end of the night. Yeah. So Byron I picked it. up an, uh, an actual assist on yep. one of them. That's, you know, and it was on, so. and it was quick outs. Right. It was yep. awesome. Um, Who so, their transition as a team tonight awesome. was lightning. That's my point. So, you know, somewhere is it Prater on the bench? Is it is it Bednar? Is it you know whatever? Is it you know from from the video room? Hey, put those two guys together. But they were smart enough to put the two of them together. And sometimes sometimes things work, sometimes don't work. But tonight it worked. It was awesome to see those two together make big plays and go back when you're watching that video there because I know you watch all those goals again. I don't know. I don't remember. I'm, I'm going to go on a limb, though. There was like a little face-off before McKinnon's goal, uh, and there's a, there's like 10, 12 seconds that the camera's on on uh, on Bo and mm -hmm. McKinnon. They were talking, and they're like really going like, you know, so left, right, left, 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 left. 
and I we got distracted and everything, but I don't remember. Is that right before the goal? But I'll tell you one thing. If it Didn't is, that's pretty freaking amazing. If, if that's how it happened, I'll, Miko ends up in the corner. Puck is thrown out to Val on the far wall. And you know what well, I mean? It, and then Max going through the middle. I, I don't know. Is it? I, I'd have to go back and look at it. Was it right after? If it is right after, that's that's pure genius. I, I don't know about Bo's part in that, but I can tell you. The Miko to Val up the wall, kick yeah. to the center, is the AV systems to a T no, on no, their exactly. breakout. They oh, run yeah. that play constantly. But I think that's when Bo goes in the corner. Bo to Miko, Miko yep. to... But yep. it was like... I'd have to go back and look because you always look. But just, yeah, I'll take, you'll see, you'll see I'll take a look. You'll see it. They're yeah. right there. Yeah, it's pretty amazing if it is right there. That is part of the reason why I'm so shocked at how Calgary defends it. They should know it's coming. Yeah, because yeah, the Avs try to get through the neutral zone as fast as possible. Maybe more than any other team, they're trying to have Nathan McKinnon go well, you the <laughs> through the neutral rod, zone. Yeah. <laughs> And teams, it's, you know, why don't we see McKinnon with the kind of breakaways that he was getting when he started becoming elite? It's because teams learned. Yeah. You have those guys. They can't hold yep. that blue line. Just, they can't even hold their own blue line. They have to just sag yep. off of it and try to defend him and, and make him pull up and try and defend in transition or try to make him go wide or try and beat you as a guy in the middle alone. You know, whatever. Yep. And they didn't do any of those things. Keep them they in front chose of you. Yeah. Option D, none of the above. <laughs> Get torched. <laughs> yeah. And and to give to give that dude all that space, it's insanity. Yeah. <laughs> the way that they played it. I, I was so confused on live. And then before we started the show, I went back and watched it several times. I'm even more confused having watched it. Because they it just dump, gets worse. They <laughs> dump the puck in. Yep. Their forwards go and they forecheck like normal. You should be pretty ready for that. Yeah. yeah, like one of their guys, one of their defensemen is getting off the ice. Okay, and this is all pretty normal. And one of them comes onto the ice, and then that's the guy defending Vel. All right, cool. What's where? Where are? Whoa! Why wow, was Nathan McKinnon alone? What the hell happened? What? And here's one of the big differences for me on a night where the Abs end up winning this game as opposed to some of the ones that they're losing. That chance happens, and what do they do? They capitalize on it. Yeah. Nathan McKinnon finishes it. Yeah, and, and at that point, like, when he got the breakaway, how this game had happened. Yeah, you kind of felt you it. You were but... like, there's a 4,000% <laughs> chance this is going in. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no way how this third period has played out that this is not a goal. <laughs> there's no way. It, I agree. And that's why and he's one of the best Lidl. players in the world. And Dan Vildar is not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drew we'll called that one. Yeah, I called. I did not think they were going to come back. But when they tied it, I was like, yeah, this no, no, is ending in the rag. You called that one. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, Vladar is bad. Him. Sorry. It's just true. No. Yeah, was, Have you watched Dan Vladar play before? Yes. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, anyway, I. It's it's funny, right? Because you were 20 minutes away from this game being a disaster. Like feeling exactly like the Philadelphia game, yep, but worse, yep. And instead, yeah. you're like, "Oh wow, the Avs are amazing! What a great comeback! They work super hard, they get rewarded, all these positive things, which they deserve." I just, I just find it funny that the way it played out. Uh, sports are dumb, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why the, do why do we invest our emotions into the, the pendulum stupid swung sport? from doom to vroom? Yeah, there it is. The doom. That's our shirt. The doom vroom uh, <laughs> pendulum. <laughs> you had to touch the uh, again, right? You know, oh, do I get burned again? Like as a little kid, and they <laughs> did. Check. And like, yeah, is it hot? Yeah, oh, it is hot. Now you're down five three. Yep. It's, it's bad. Yeah. It's really hot. <laughs> You think Nazem Kadri was watching this happen, going, "Fuck me, man, I miss this." Yeah. <laughs> Probably. It, it was Remember electric. when it was fun to do this to teams and not have this done to you? <laughs> he was electric. He's got seven and a half million reasons why. And he was so close to the Gordy Howe hat trick. <laughs> All he needed was for Georgiev to drop the gloves with him. <laughs> uh, it, it's a great. A great night for the Avs in the end. And it's funny because these games do turn into confidence boosters for teams. Even if you go to the, the video room tomorrow and you say, boy, there's a lot of bad stuff going on here. You still feel good about your team because they I persevered through I don't even know it. that there is. Like, yeah, you were saying the coaches are hating this. 
Calgary's coaches are like, we don't even belong in this game. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Whatever. Like, they're going to go through the video and be like, we suck. We suck. We suck. We suck. This is a, we got a talent problem. The abs coaches are going to go through this game and they're going to be like, this is incredibly stupid. Why are you guys doing this? This is incredibly stupid. And this it's going to be four clips. This is a bad goal. You know? Yeah. This, these, it's going to be four clips long. And then they're going to be like, oh, then you guys made all this, made it you all. You did up. dope stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> That's why we pay you guys. Okay, good reminder. <laughs> uh, that's all I really have. Is there anything else you guys wanted to touch on in this one? I don't. I I would just contend with the idea that you f- feel like this is a great night for the Avs. It's more of like a sigh of relief that whew, the home stand lives. A successful home stand is still alive. Yeah. Now you need the Eric Johnson return game. You know that guy's scoring if he's in the lineup. <laughs> like. They won five two. That's tonight. you make a good. This is a great night in the moment. In the bigger picture, yeah, it's very much a hey. You kind of needed to win this game. Yeah, Dallas won. You won. Yeah, keep just status quo, baby. Miko scored. Tuna scored. Yeah, I, I mean Ben Meyer scored. I mean, it's, right. it's, you know, it's just pretty cool. There's know? a lot so. of guys. There's a lot of guys that you feel uh, really a lot of much moments. better about yeah. after this night than yeah. the way that you started it. Yeah. And yeah. now you're like, all right, watch out. Moose is super pissed now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Is that when are we about to get the the first iteration of the angry moose that's actually good? I hope so. Oh, and Kale. historically angry moose not Kale so was good. was over three last three games. Yeah, right? I'm just saying. Then he got he scores two one tonight. tonight. Yeah. yeah, Colorado's defense for the record five points tonight. Absolutely awesome. on fire. Yeah. Like, hey. Josh Manson with another point. <laughs> And a, a six spin six. Okay. move in the defensive zone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Josh Manson. <laughs> Uh, we do have some super chats here. Five dollars from Melanie, who says, "Was a fun game to watch. Uh, lo- was a fun game to watch live. Yay for the W. Take care. Thank you very much, Melanie. I'm glad you enjoyed the game. I know Melanie was always believing. Oh, definitely. She's not a doubter. She got into second intermission, and she was like, "This can be a great third period." <laughs> Tonight was just intuition. <laughs> when you feel it, you feel it. Mm-hmm. That's all there is to it. Could be a manic episode. Could be intuition. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> but I, exactly. Uh, th- she's right, though. This was a fun hockey game. Yeah, it was. The, the weird thing about sports is the frustrating and, and stupid stuff sometimes sets you up for awesome stuff. Yeah. This will be know. one of those hockey games that we do remember like years later. For sure. Like you remember the seven six game in Vancouver? <laughs> that they lose? Not I really. Do. Grubauer gets lit up. The Evs blow a lead in that game. Fantastic. First ever Avalanche watch party for our company. That's probably why I don't remember it. It was incredibly yeah, the game was incredibly fun though. Yep. Incredibly fun. Oh, that's fun. Uh, five dollars from Vaguely Sober, who says "Sweaty Boys" for Big Ben and Big Sam getting on the score sheets, and a ceremonial "Sweaty Boy" for Tater finally burying one tonight. Thank you for the "Sweaty Boys," Vaguely. It's fun having call ups that you can reasonably expect some production out of for Love the Evs. Uh, which just about everyone has, right? The only call up that hasn't gotten a point is Pavel. And he played like six yeah. minutes. Yeah. So pretty decent production out of that for Colorado. Jeez, dude. Uh, Two dollars from vaguely so or from Lucas. Sorry. Who says, thanks, Mr. Lecky's dad for your service. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. And, I mean, if it works, it works, I guess. I'm not going to not going to knock it. Uh, and then 27 sweet bucks. From Flats, who says, I like winning more than not winning. Damn, if that ain't true. <laughs> Sometimes Bull sports Durham. are distilled into a very simple concept. Bull Durham. Winning, fun. Losing, not fun. Winning is better than losing. <laughs> Bull Durham. Just, uh, I normally don't look too much at all situations, but I was curious tonight. Sure. 42 scoring chances for the Avalanche. That's a lot. 42 20 scoring chances in a 60 minute game. That's a lot of scoring chances. <laughs> 15 high danger and 17 given up, so you continue to be uncomfortable with that. But that disaster of a second period is where 10 of them came from. So, you know, clean up the second period a little bit. 
Just a little bit, because their third period continues to be... Look. Or leave the second period squirrely and keep letting me hammer the second period high scoring period bet. <laughs> and me to keep picking the abs no matter what happens in the second period. I'll just start betting on the abs in the third. Regardless of score. It's been a pretty good moneymaker this year. Both of those so far. I am annoyed I didn't do it tonight. I'm actually really, I'm like, that's just money out of my pocket. <laughs> Uh, and then a late one here from Rugby Prof, who says, wore my Miko jersey tonight, so of course I take credit for all three of his points. Go Avs, what a game. Hoping for more normal wins soon. This team isn't normal. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Not a normal team. <laughs> but it was a good one, and we all need some more Avs wins in our life. That's for sure. Uh, we are... Of course, brought to you by MSU Denver. Uh, make sure you get in with MSU, whether you're starting or restarting your college career. They have over 90 different majors to choose from. You can do online or in-person classes or both. You can do a mix of whatever you want. MSU Denver will accommodate you and give you great opportunities to get your education and jobs going forward. From that, head on over to msudenver.edu today. I think you can still register for fall cl or for spring classes, but that's going to close very soon. So make sure... You get in on the spring classes while you still can with MSU Glenn Denver. Pickens. Yep. Always make sure you look at ratemyprofessor.com. It is a great website. Take good classes, not bad ones. Uh, that's all we got. We're Education gonna... distilled into a simple concept. <laughs> Sometimes life is simple, man. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate all y'all hanging out with us. Almost 200 likes on the show tonight. That's awesome. Uh, we will be back tomorrow for an off day show. So we do do those on occasion. Dude, I'm so excited to talk about this Miko Lecky's dad thing. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we, we can talk about that too. We got suspensions all over the league to talk about. Yeah. And, and the watermelon shirt. Okay. The power of the watermelon Lord. shirt. Undefeated shirt or something. I don't know. I don't know what this record is, yeah. but. I feel like a different man when I wear it. And I think that, especially when they're at home, that power transfers to them. Just down the road. Yeah. yeah. It's watermelon osmosis. <laughs> okay. Never floats your boat, buddy. You ever seen that video of a watermelon getting squeezed? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. It gets posted in the DNVR Almost Discord. Almost constantly. Oh, yeah. my. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us. We are out of here for tonight. We will see you in the next one. We all silly like the mayor. 